welcome to the Hoover YouTube channel. Today I'm really excited to be joined by our front end wizard Sean who's going to show us a brand new feature that's just been released for Hoover UI. So please welcome Sean. Thank you Rebecca. With Hoover, uh, we have sliders that are built with Glider or with our own custom implementation, but they're never really easy to reuse for your own custom sliders or build something really cool with it. With our recently released Snap Slider, we try to make that bridge a lot easier. And I want to showcase a few of these implementations and inspire you for what is possible with it. And then also show you a little bit of the way how you can build this. But besides that, I hope you uh, explore the uh, snap slider. And if you have questions for us, always reach out on Slack. With that said, uh, let me share you the page. So the first one, of course, as we always know, is the product slider. Visually, it's not that different than it was before. But now it's all powered through this new snap slider we have built. The main focus on this is because it's built using the snap slider, it's actually built using CSS and not JavaScript. Meaning that on the initial page render, this will simply stay as is, and only the parts that actually need the JavaScript are hydrated when applied. So, for an example, if I scroll through this, you can see it's now instant compared to the Hoover demo version we currently have in all our versions. Was that the mouse you were scrolling with then, or the keyboard? Yes. Yeah, so I know you, so is it? Good, that good was one. Clever. That was like magic, <laughs> it just magically scrolled. So, because this is a CSS slider, I can scroll vertically with a mouse if I want to. It's a lot easier on Mac OS versus a Windows or a Linux machine. But, uh, f as you already said, uh, it needs to be accessible on all fronts. And with a CSS slider, you will always try to keep that in check. So for an example, if I use my keyboard, I can also go into it and you will already see that I get the skip link so I can skip it. Then I have the arrow navigation so I can click it and then go through it. Or I can go into the products and actually use my arrow keys to move through the slides. Nice. Or go to the dots and jump complete slide groups. So it's fully accessible. On touch, it will simply work because your fingers, the mouse at that moment. And all of that is powered to CSS, with the exception, of course, for the, the navigation arrows and the dots. Those are the parts that are hydrated by the snap sliders JavaScript code, making it super duper easy to build sliders because it's just CSS and the snap sliders doing all of the hard lifting of adding the appropriate accessibility and the extra magic needed to do the navigation between elements using the buttons or the pad. Very clever. Super lightweight as well, I'm guessing. Yeah, so that's another advantage. The snap slider is super duper light. It's an Alpine plugin, meaning you can implement it and then build your sliders as is. I will showcase the code in a little while, but because it's so super lightweight, you only need the Alpine plugin. You don't even need to write your own JavaScript. You can through the extensibility of the snap slider. Uh, but in uh, the most used cases, like 99%, you only need the snap slider and all of the other things you want to build can be done just through CSS. And to give you an idea of where this inspiration comes from, the upcoming CSS spec is working on bringing this natively to CSS. Uh, of course, with Hoover, we want to stay a little bit more backwards compatible with all the browsers. And so that's why we built this Alpine plugin, which allows you to use it right now uh, without worrying about browser support. And you still get all of the major benefits from a CSS slider. Love it. With this release, of course, the UI slider, which you already know and love, um, is also getting that update. So this is the same slider, only now it's powered through the snap slider, meaning there's no JavaScript involved. This also makes it a lot easier to reuse in the page builder of Magento or any other PXML files. And for our Hoover CMS product, you don't even have to do this because it's already included by default. And you get this already without building anything. But 
if you want to create your own variant, as you can see here and in Hoover CMS, you will get that for free because the plugin is already provided and you just write the CSS. It's amazing. Yeah, I heard that it was already included. It's like a, a sneak peek already in uh, Hoover CMS. Yeah, so if you're already playing around with C Hoover CMS, you probably have noticed that the sliders are really snappy and there's no external JavaScript library like Splite or Glider or a very heavy JavaScript slider under the hood. It's just this. So yeah, really excited for that. And I hope uh, a lot of people also like it. And if they have really cool ideas of it, again, please share it with us. You can also share it in the showcase. It doesn't need to be a website or a store you built. Uh, if you have cool ideas for the UI, share it on the UI channel. This is a super duper nice extension on Hoova. And we hope to do more, but for different topics with this, to just reduce the JavaScript mental load and make it really easy to build specific components. But let me continue and uh, showcase a few other variants to give you an idea of how easy it is to build sliders. So here we have another slider, similar to the Hoover CMS variant but with a title and the buttons here. Uh, and I have one here for based on the designs you probably have seen in Netflix with the nice little bars on top here. Again, with those little transparent arrows in the next. And this, of course, looks really nice if I would have made the screen super duper small on mobile. You see that it gets really nice and full, feels like a full-fledged slider. And it's very clear that there is a sliding possible for the user. Again, emphasizing the accessibility aspect, making it super duper clear that there is more beyond the scroll view and the arrow buttons hydrate that even further. But of course, that doesn't stop there. I have plans for the UI to even do this for the galleries. So this is only an example. But you could build complete galleries with sliders, of course, because at the end of the road, a gallery is a slider, just with a light box modal effect when you want to zoom in on the images. So good stuff to come. Uh, and one little other one, uh, which is more of an experiment. I leave browser support is a little bit uh, lower on the list, uh, but I'm using uh, here um, a stack slider. So I can scroll not uh, horizontal, but vertically. And with this, you can see that I have these nice cards and I can scroll back. They're animated through the new CSS spec, which allows you to observe a scroll position, making it super duper smooth uh, with the animations, including of the JavaScript logic. So if I click the button, it still goes down. But besides that, it's just CSS that's happening here. And another variant for this one. That's so nice, looks really smart. So yeah, it makes you aware of how easy it's built to build sliders. For all of these sliders, I spent not that much time, except for the last ones, because I really wanted to make this really snappy. But for the top ones, it was really easy, and it only took me a couple of hours to get it really nice built. And it's mainly for the styling purposes. Because of the logic, I didn't have to worry about that. So let's dive into some code, because that would be nice. So first off, let me start at our current implementation and tell you why we're doing this in the first place. So as you already said, uh, all of our sliders are built using custom logic or uh, external libraries and external libraries are really large. So if you have seen the UI, you have, would have probably seen, let me get there. You probably have, would have seen the snap slider, uh, which is uh, not the snap slider. You probably would have seen the uh, splite slider which is powered through Splite.js, which is in our upcoming plugins. Apologies. Uh, and that's the snap slider. It's that one. Should have opened it beforehand. So yeah, this is something you're going to be avoiding with the new upcoming uh, Hoover slider. Big chunks of JavaScript that's handling all of this. And this is Splite.js. Glider looks the same and you name it. 
you don't want this. And you see my editor is already annoyed by it. Now we made it, of course, for Huva ourselves, already a little bit better for the product slider. But even this could be done better by avoiding all of this logic and going a step further and going to just this logic. And besides that, you get a full-fledged slider. It's just the CSS from this point on. So how does this work? Let's dive deep a little bit. And so I have the UI version here in front. It's a little bit more readable, so I can move through it. So the main essence of the logic is the XSnap slider. It's an Alpine plugin that needs to be paired with an XData attribute. And besides that, the slider needs to know where the slides are present, a track. After that, pretty much the slider is already taking effect. It will track the current active slides and it will respond to that. To give a good example, if the slide is outside of the view, for accessibility purposes, you want to keep it inert. This means that the user cannot navigate through any interaction of the device, like the keyboard or the mouse, through that slide. Once it comes into view, it gets an attribute that it's in view, and you can apply, apply styling to that behavior. As for the buttons, you can add multiple. If you want more than one date button to go to the next slide, you can add one, repeat it, and so on. Uh, the only thing that the button needs to know about is the attribute data next. Technically, you could even place it on an element that's not a button. I wouldn't recommend that because that's bad accessibility. You don't want that. And the same is said for the data pref. Besides that, you probably have noticed there's no pager here. Where are the dots? Well, that part can actually be automated. So we offer an option like auto pager, which allows you to add the pager dots by default. This means you just focus on the slider and the dots are added by default. Of course, that means JavaScript is handling that part and you probably want to tell it. So for that, we also added options to that you can actually add your own tailwind classes to the pager and the marker dots using these data attributes. All of these options are explained in the uh, plugin page for the Huva snap slider. Uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, not knowing which options are available. Do know that the XSnap slider kept the options as small as humanly possible, uh, only adding the data attributes where it is really needed. And besides that, that's pretty much it. And that's the great part about it. It's that simple. So That's awesome. It looks, even I could do it, it looks that simple. Well, that's the goal. Uh, so making it so duper duper easy that the only thing you need to know is Tailwind classes and some HTML, well, PHP in this case. But in reality, you could just write this with plain HTML and it would still work. Awesome. And of course, there's many more things to talk about and explain and share. But to give you a nice idea of an intro, what is all possible with this, I hope this at least satisfies everyone. Definitely. I know this has been uh, requested, hasn't it, a few times. Um, we've had to, a few people reach out. Yeah, so uh, this is an older issue uh, originally um, made by uh, Simon uh, and created by Finai. Uh, has been on our Hoover issue board, so you can see that uh, we will take issues very seriously, even if it's already a very long time on the board. Mm. And it has also been really requested in Slack in a recent um, year. Uh, we wanted to create something. We knew we were building already something. And now it's here. As you can see, I picked it up six months ago. And now we're here. And we have a working slider with only a few attributes. And that's it. It's amazing. Yeah, it's great to see the, the history, I think, behind the features and just how much we do think about everything that the community shares with us and take it all on board and do as much as we can. So yeah, I think this is definitely the right time for it to come out with everything else that we're launching with Hoover Commerce and uh, and yeah, and like you say, the new CSS packs coming at the same time. So yeah, it's ideal. It looks so smart. 
and yeah it being super lightweight as well I think it just leans into exactly what we want to achieve in terms of performance and accessibility yeah so to close it this is of course a release now for Hoover UI but we're going to also uh, add this to the default team meaning there is going to be a, a version where we are transitioning away from our current sliders and adding this also making the default team lighter and easier to use uh, so it's not exclusive to the UI or the CMS in <laughs> this case and to emphasize that accessibility part it's always risky to open your dev tools but if I zoom in on the page, you can see that we now have a nice region which is described as a carousel. You see multiple carousels in this case, and all of them have names, uh, all of them have the appropriate headings, uh, the buttons are clear, you see the tab panels being reflected. All of them are added through uh, the JavaScript logic, and if you add that yourself, the JavaScript logic will simply skip it, respect your own choices. Again, it's a hydration process. It focuses on adding functionality, and if the functionality is already there, it simply respects that. Nice. Love it. Thank you, Sean. That was a really, really interesting little demo, um, and I'm sure that everyone's going to be super excited to use this and yeah, and to see it rolled out everywhere. So yeah, thank you very much. No problem. And thank you so much for watching. If there's any information that you need or if you want to ask us any questions, you'll find all of the links below to everything that we've talked about today. And of course, you can always reach out to us on Slack or leave a comment here um, or find us on any of the social platforms. We're all over the shop. So yeah, please do reach out if you've got any questions or if you want to know more. Thank you.